video. And if this is your first time here, I make videos about the nutritarian diet and living a vegan lifestyle. So if those topics interest you, then maybe you could subscribe to my channel. Today's video is going to be about vitamin B12. This is a really important topic that I think is often overlooked by a lot of people eating a plant-based diet. So before I even start this video, do plant-based doctors recommend that you take a vitamin B12 supplement? Yes, they do. They all recommend that you take a vitamin B12 supplement. So does that mean that the vegan diet is flawed? Well, we're gonna get into that. In this video, I'm going to be talking about what B12 is, why we need to supplement with it, what happens if we become deficient, and what are our requirements for it. So what is vitamin B12? Vitamin B12 also goes by the name cobalamin because it's the only vitamin that contains a metal. It contains cobalt. It's one of the eight water-soluble vitamins and it plays a role in cell metabolism, the formation of red blood cells, and the functioning of your brain and your nervous system. So it is a really, really important vitamin. How is vitamin B12 made? Vitamin B12 cannot be made by plants and it cannot be made by animals. It can only be made by bacteria. And the reason why you get it when you consume animal products is because it stores in flesh very easily. So the most common dietary source of vitamin B12 is animal products, which is why there's an assumption that if you are plant-based, you will become B12 deficient. If you are eating meat to get your B12, you are in a way supplementing because there is a very good chance that the animal was injected with B12. 90% of B12 that is sold is injected in livestock. So in order to have B12, you need these bacteria and our body actually stores these bacteria that produce B12 largely in our colon. Why do we need to supplement with vitamin B12? Well, this all started in 1877 when Pasteur, a scientist, developed germ theory disease. Since then, we've been trying to eliminate all these bacteria and we're trying to make our world as clean as possible. So in this day and age, we are obsessed with sanitization. We spray everything with cleansers, antiseptics, antibiotics. We're trying to get rid of all these bacteria, which is good because we're getting rid of bad bacteria, like we don't have to deal with cholera, for example, but we are also getting rid of a lot of the good bacteria, like the bacteria that make vitamin B12. So our soils are very depleted nowadays, which is why uh, we're not getting it from our fruits and vegetables, and um, animals in the wild will get it from the soil, from the dirty water, but we are living in a really clean world. In prehistoric times, people were able to get vitamin B12 from the soil and from the water because they didn't have the advanced hygiene that we have today. So that explains why we've eliminated natural sources of vitamin B12 and there is a need for supplementation. Do I need to worry about vitamin B12 deficiency? A deficiency in vitamin B12 is extremely rare, but if it does occur, it is very severe. The first sign of vitamin B12 deficiency will show up in your red blood cell count. This is called megaloblastic anemia. The second symptom is where it shows up in your nervous system, so you start to get tingling in your fingers and your hands, and if it's left untreated for too long, it can be irreversible. So obviously we don't want to become B12 deficient. Luckily, it's really easy to prevent that. The human body is extremely efficient at utilizing, absorbing, and conserving vitamin B12. So like I said, the colon is the location where most of the bacteria in our body is that produces B12. However, the location where B12 is absorbed in the human body is in the small intestine, which is upstream from the colon. So that is why feces from humans and animals is full of vitamin B12. So if you're living in close proximity to your farm animals and the soil, you can get vitamin B12 that way. 
So vitamin B12 is unique because it's the only vitamin that requires a cofactor. So it's produced in the stomach and it's called a intrinsic factor B12 complex. And this complex is what is absorbed in the small intestine, in the ileum. There is also a way to absorb B12 without this cofactor, and that is by consuming larger doses of oral B12, and that is called passive absorption. It is less efficient, but it is an option for people who aren't able to produce this cofactor. So the most common disease that you get with B12 deficiency is called pernicious anemia. And this is when you are unable to produce the protein to make the cofactor because like I said, vitamin B12 needs a cofactor in order to be absorbed by the ileum. And this is the most common reason why there's B12 deficiency. Um, it could be because you have a disease of the small intestine or the stomach or you've had surgery, those could be reasons why you're unable to make this protein. The likelihood of B12 deficiency because of lack of dietary B12 is very rare. So if you're following an average Western diet, then you have about two to five years of stored B12 in your system. And that's because we only need less than three micrograms per day and like I said, the body is constantly reabsorbing and conserving vitamin B12. So this estimate could actually be extended to a lot longer than that, but we don't know for sure and why risk uh, a deficiency when it's super easy to not be deficient in this vitamin. So if you get your blood test and you're looking to see if you're deficient, you're deficient if your levels are less than 80 picograms per milliliter. What you want is your levels to be above 150 picograms per milliliter. So like I said, the requirements for vitamin B12 are less than three micrograms per day. And I'm using Dr. McDougall's recommendation just to be safe, he recommends five micrograms per day, even though the requirement is even less than that. So if you go to the health food store and you get a bottle of B12 supplements, you'll notice that the pills are about 500 to 1000 milligrams, which is way more than you need per day. So that's why Dr. McDougall recommends you just take one pill a week. If you're really concerned, then you could take a pill every day or every other day. There's not really an upper limit because if you consume too much, you're just gonna pee it out anyway. The vitamin B12 pills are non-toxic. There doesn't seem to be any adverse side effects of taking them. So which kind of vitamin B12 should you take? Your choices are cyanocobalamin, hydroxycobalamin, or methylcobalamin. And most plant-based doctors I have found have recommended taking cyanocobalamin, and I think that's because the most research has been done on that form of vitamin B12. I've also heard plant-based doctors just say, get whatever vitamin B12 supplement you can. Just take whatever one you have access to. There are ways you can get vitamin B12 from your food. A lot of plant-based milks are fortified with vitamin B12, as well as nutritional yeast. You can also get it uh, from nori sheets in sushi. There are other foods that claim to have vitamin B12, but you need to be careful there because it has to be the bioactive form of it. If it's the inactive form, it will not be absorbed. If you have trouble getting your vitamin B12 orally, there's also the option of getting a B12 injection. So if you're unsure if you have adequate levels of vitamin B12, all you need to do is get a blood test and tell your doctor that you wanna check your vitamin B12 levels. So vitamin B12 is not just an issue for people eating a plant-based diet. Everyone should be concerned about their vitamin B12 levels. One in six meat eaters are low in vitamin B12, and everyone over the age of 50 is recommended to take a vitamin B12 supplement. So I wanted to finish this video by reading this quote by Dr. John McDougall. Take a moment to compare the possible consequences of your dietary decisions. You could choose to eat lots of B12 rich animal foods and avoid the one in a million chance of developing a reversible anemia and or even less common, damage to your nervous system. 
However, this decision puts you at a one in two chance of dying prematurely from a heart attack or stroke, a one in seven chance of breast cancer, or a one in six chance of prostate cancer. The same thinking results in obesity, diabetes, osteoporosis, constipation, indigestion, and arthritis. So when you adopt a plant-based diet, people are gonna drill you about vitamin B12 and tell you that your diet is flawed. So I hope that this video helped you understand why the vitamin B12 issue is not caused by diet, it's caused by our environment and our society that we live in today. And it's not really a big deal that we have to take a supplement. I really appreciate you guys watching my video and I hope to see